Night vision is quickly becoming ubiquitous in the gun community. If you own a rifle and don't have night vision, you are a lesser human. Subpar. Your boogaloo value is significantly diminished, and you should expect to serve as F-15 fodder when all hell breaks loose. Oh, sorry guys. Looks like I was reading from last year's script. Here we go. Thermal is the most important accessory you don't have, you worthless piece of shit. Night vision is as awesome as it sounds. The first time I looked through my PBS-14, I was blown away. I expected it to be blurrier, grainier, less user-friendly, and yet the truth is, you can see at night. Yes, it requires some light source, Yes, the headborne systems can be cumbersome. And yes, the limited field of view and monovision, if you are using a PBS-14, require some adjustment. But damn, these things are easy and so much fun. Everyone can and should own at least a PBS-14. And once you own one, you should use it. And I don't just mean evening trips to the range. I'm talking night hikes, stargazing, sitting around the campfire. Before long, you might find yourself breaking out the tubes for completely unplanned occasions. I once had the opportunity to ride a powered bike on the beach at night, but flashlights were not allowed because, as is well known among beach dwellers, sea turtles spontaneously combust at the sight of an LED. So I took the tubes for a spin. Passed a couple making out in the dark, pretty sure I freaked them out. The point is, Night vision is awesome and deserves to be used and carried with you in such a way that it is accessible even when you are not planning to use it. And if you're with me so far, perhaps the idea of EDC night vision, that is, night vision for everyday carry, isn't sounding quite so great. Now, am I going to have a PBS-14 on my person at all times? No. But keeping a night vision set up in the car, that's more reasonable. And especially if I'm going on a road trip, I don't leave home without it. So I want to talk today about what an EDC night vision setup could look like, and in fact, what mine is. This could go alongside a ready rig slash active shooter response kit, if you keep one in your car, to supplement your kit with night vision, just in case. This first piece is perhaps a non-essential part of the gear. It's a Streamlight Sidewinder. I purchased this recently and haven't quite figured out how to fully integrate this into the setup. It comes with a headband, but can be clipped to a belt or piece of clothing. Running it with a headband over my Nod setup hasn't worked great for me so far, so I'll be testing out other ways to make this work. It has a weak 55 lumen white light, so it functions well as a task light and or survival light. What makes this a very neat addition to the kit is the option to select from blue, red, and IR settings. Each setting has multiple brightness modes, and one feature of note is that the dimmest IR setting is dimmer than most onboard IR illuminators that come built into the housings of night vision. The ability to switch colors is especially helpful in a survival scenario, since red light tends to be less noticeable, although it will stand out like a lantern to anyone who has night vision, and blue light is helpful when looking for anything red, like blood. The night vision is mounted to a cry-precision nightcap, which has worked wonderfully for me. I find it very stable and comfortable, the nightcap was designed as an alternative to the military-issued skull crushers, which do not allow the user to rotate the device up into the stowed position, and do not allow for a counterweight. I do not have any personal experience running a skull crusher, thank god, but I have heard they are quite painful. Connecting the night vision to the nightcap is a Wilcox PBS-14 arm, a G24 mount, and a three-hole shroud. These are, unfortunately, very expensive but work great, and Wilcox has an excellent name in the night vision industry. The heart and soul of this setup is, of course, the PBS-14. These are like the used Honda Civics of the night vision market, and might cost about the same. The PBS-14 is everyone's starter tube, and for good reason. They are rugged, half the price of dual tubes, and, most importantly, serve a role that binocular systems do not. In other words, they don't become obsolete when you eventually spend your kid's college fund on some sweet PBS 31s. <laughs> Better use your money if you ask me. This is a whole video by itself, so I won't go into dual tubes versus mono tubes here. Brass Fax has a good video in support of PBS 14s as a still viable setup if you want to check that out. Back to the nightcap, you will notice that it has Velcro on top, 
which could be used for an IR strobe or other attachments. This battery pack, which is also from Cry Precision, is not my favorite for a couple reasons. I don't like that the Velcro that attaches it to the nightcap is only one-sided, so I lose this real estate that I could use to attach other things. I could sew or stick some Velcro tape to this, but it's a little frustrating that it doesn't come like this already. The other issue is that the pouch is not secured at the bottom to the cap, so it flops around unless you tie it down somehow. It does have this loop here, so the best I could figure was to loop the excess nylon from the adjustment strap through the loop in the pouch. And this has worked surprisingly well. Maybe this is what was intended, I don't know. I might be missing some more obvious solution, but this has worked well enough for me so far, so I haven't investigated further. You can see I keep a lifetime supply of AA batteries stacked as a counterweight. All of this fits snugly in this Peltor pouch that came free with a pair of contact sixes. I prefer something a little bit more purpose-built, but this works for now. Finally, one thing I often carry as part of my normal EDC is this V1 Vampire Light from Surefire. This has a 250 lumen white light, but it uses those lumens really well, and a 100 milliwatt infrared setting. I love this light, and obviously no one is paying me to say that. Alright, that's it. So what do you think about this setup? What would you put in your EDC night vision kit? Please know that I read and appreciate every comment. This channel is new, but I've got ideas bubbling out of all my orifices, and I can't wait to share them with you. Till next time, catch you later.